Hey everyone, it's Immortal Phoenix. So I'm here to help you guys find the computer you want and know exactly what specs to get. Because to be honest, if you just go on a website or if you just go in a store, you get thrown a bunch of options that if you don't really understand them well, will come back to bite you because they'll they'll hit you with, where your pocket is um, or you'll save a bunch of money but you'll get an inferior product. So I'm hoping that this tutorial helps people out they know exactly what to pick from the mix, what's important, what's not important. And I we're we're just going to go through here this overview to the right as you can see. We're going to go through it and I'm going to try to explain to you guys um first off what makes a computer fast cuz we all want a good working computer. We want it to be efficient. I'm going to go through what's required uh specifications for a good computer. There's certain things you just have to have. Uh, I'm going to mention why you shouldn't buy a laptop and why you should probably buy this computer of yours in the store and not online. So first things first, nowadays what makes computers fast? The CPU. The CPU, the CPU, the, the that's exactly what makes the computer fast. So what is CPU? Computer processing unit. Uh, that's That's the brain of the computer. It allows your computer to go ahead and process information quickly hence the the term if I give you a bunch of data can you sort through it if I tell you here's five pages I want you to find where the word little is on these five pages your ability to find that word is your processing power so it might take you a long time with a computer to be like oh there's the word little page three paragraph two uh, the better your CPU the better the brain of your computer the faster it is uh, the, by the way, since I wanted to make this a quick video, I'm going to make a part two for people that want to go into more depth and maybe talk about the history of computers and where we've gone, but I, I don't want to put it all in one video because I know some people just don't have the time. They just want to know what to buy. So first off, you got to get yourself a good CPU, and you might be asking yourself, well, what is a good CPU? So I'm going to go through that right now. Uh, over here, there's a great site called CPUbenchmark.net. It's owned by uh, a company called Passmark. They make this stuff really, really easy for you. So what I would recommend as far as what CPU you should get, I would say get a Core i7, uh, preferably any, any, honestly any generation is fine. First generation, second generation, we're now on third generation. If you don't know what, you know, what, which, to, if you can't tell the difference or distinguish between them, uh, the number tells you. For instance, this is my computer. I, I got the first Core i7, and again, in part two, I'll go over maybe some of my history and how to buy computers. If you've got time, I highly recommend you watch part two. But for now, I, I've got the first generation. As you can see, uh, it's only a three digit number. The second generation uh, Core i7s, they all start with a two. So, for instance, here, if you look, this is Core i7 2635QM. Uh, that's indicating that it's a second generation model. The third generation starts with a 3, so it'll be like 3000 something. Just get any Core i7, even if it's first generation, you'll be fine. And on this site, you can see, these are the high end CPUs. Uh, and you can see here, mine, not, mine's 5000 of whatever measurement they're using. Now, to compare mine to the others, you can go all the way down and say, okay, well, these are, again, these are all high end CPUs. If you just keep going down, you can see mine is about double this processor. It's, it's working twice as good as this. And here, if you go to the top, you've got Xeon processors, which are server processors. I wouldn't recommend them because they're very pricey. As you can see, they're $1,000, $2,000. Uh, they're only meant for servers that are on all day long, super, super powerful. What you want to go with is probably, uh, this is a third uh, Core i7 third generation here, 3000 blah 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 K. It's uh, by the way, ignore clock speeds. You see this? 3.2 gigahertz. These numbers uh, will mean nothing to you. These just basically say how hard the CPU is working, not how good it is. For instance, a person that's really good at playing basketball, he doesn't have to try very hard. LeBron James, him trying half as hard or Kobe trying half as hard is still better than all of us trying as hard as we can. So ignore these these gigahertz numbers you might because if you buy a computer and it says I am a three gigahertz computer and apparently you you guess in your head that that's better than a two gigahertz computer you'll make a mistake because there are two gigahertz computers here for instance this 2.3 gigahertz Xeon this is much better than if you go down this 3.3 Xeon here so 
you want to be careful, completely ignore this clock speed. That's just for people who tweak clock speeds and stuff. You don't want to worry about that. What you want to look for is to get an 8 processor computer. So the Intel Core i7s are exactly what you want. Uh, again, if you want to know more about other processors, go in more in depth, watch my part 2. For now, don't buy a Core i5, don't buy Core i3s. Uh, when you buy a computer, it's an investment. You don't buy a new computer every year. You shouldn't be. If I bought my Core i5 in 2009, top of the line, no one had ever heard of what a Core i5, Core i7 was, I should say. Sorry, I misspoke. And it's 2012, and my computer is still uh, one of the top of the line computers. It's still much better than you know those Core i5s, Core i3s. So you want to go with these Core i7s because they have eight brains, so to speak as I've gotten written here they've got eight processors which if you want to go into the details it's actually four processors that have been split hyper threaded again we're going to talk more about that in the second video which is more of an in-depth look so first thing what do you do you want to aim for an Intel Core i7 computer done uh, in the future uh, we might that this might change but because the Core i7 is super powerful uh, within the next three four five years you, this video should be fine. So for now, 2012, a Core i7, you're locked with your CPU. That's what you're going to go with. Hard drive, make sure you got 400 gigs or more. Don't worry about the speed. I know there's 7,200 and 10,000 things. Don't, don't even worry about that. Just get, make sure it has 400 gigs or more. Uh, for your video card, make sure it has a GPU. So you can find out if you do a little bit of research on the internet. What What is a GPU? It's a graphical processing unit. All the new uh, video cards have one, and it helps lessen the load for your computer when your video card has its own processor working to give you the best image as possible. As long as your video card has a GPU, you're fine. Again, you can come back to this website. This website has benchmarks for all sorts of stuff. As you see here, if you click this tab, there's video benchmarks. This will take you to another site that they own called videocardbenchmark.net. It's the same company, same, like, uh, you know, people that are doing this and you can see mine here just for an, uh, just to understand for instance I showed you guys my processor here right you don't need to get anything uh, better than my processor if, if that's all you buy you'll be okay so let's go to it quickly core I, oh, I think you have core i7 and then mine was a 920 so I went to it quickly so that you know buy anything that's better and maybe avoid anything that's worse and you're fine and you can use this number as your reference 5518 uh, again I would still recommend your Core i7's over your Core i5's because they the eight processors share the load better than if you have four processors uh, so it's it's like eight people working they can work less hard than if it's four people doing all the work so again go for those Core i7's I think I've said it <laughs> in, enough by now Anyways, back to the. I, I did that just to show you where mine was. So if you if you guys were confused, you would know what to buy, what not to buy when you're doing your computer shopping. And then this is just my standard. Uh, my standard for video card is the Radeon Radeon HD 4850, made by AMD uh, or ATI, but ATI is owned by AMD. Uh, anything better than this is you don't have to buy necessarily. Just get something around this range. Because this can run my, my video card when I got it was top of the line uh, in February of '09. Uh, basically, it can run whatever you need it to run. I run all the games on Max. I can run anything you want easily. I can get those 60 frames per second. My processor has uh, a GPU. Uh, so I mean, if if you just want to be able to run games or do do whatever you want, just get something near here. You don't have to go crazy. Uh, just don't think about getting, thinking that you need those higher, higher, extreme video cards. Just get something like I said with the GPU. Mine has a GPU. Something similar to it should be all right. And just for a frame of reference, these are lower than mine. Uh, and then these ones up here are higher than mine. These are, these are not needed by any stretch of the imagination. You don't need to get any of these. Uh, but if if there's a deal on one of them, um, then yeah, you can go ahead and pick it out and know, hey, you got an extremely good video card. These are all the high-end video cards. So they have another page here that are the best bang for your buck video cards. Appa according to this, 
they're saying buy the Radeon HD 6670 60 bucks but apparently it's gonna give you the, the best bang for your buck and if you're asking yourself well where is this on this chart let's find out Radeon HD 6670 and it's right about here and if you compare that to where mine was that's 1180 4850 mine's 1140 so it's, it's a tad bit better than mine and honestly if, it, if since it's so close to mine I would say hey for oh this is the mobility I'm sorry I'm up here so that was 1180 I'm 1332 so mine is a tad bit faster than the video card they said which was only 60 bucks so if you want you can pay 90 bucks and get mine which is a tad bit better or you can get that one my, the point being is look at the specs of your video card and just ask one simple question does it have a GPU if it has a GPU then most likely you're gonna wanna pick it up uh, the other thing maybe you wanna look for is how much RAM does that video card have I would say don't get anything less than 512 512 megabytes uh, I'll, I'll place that in here right now don't get anything less nothing less than 512 uh, preferably one gig honestly with one gig you're set you don't need two gigs you don't need a gig and a half you'll be perfectly set so just a quick review we know that CPUs are what make the computer super fast we know that we're gonna definitely get a core i7 and if you want to go into the details of why you can go into my second video and we know that uh, for our video cards we're just gonna make sure we get something with the GPU nothing less than 512 megabytes of RAM preferably it'll be uh, one gig of RAM and this is RAM on the video card itself not RAM that you would buy from the store alright man it's already taking longer than I expected but uh, we have to be thorough here it's better to be thorough than to rush so as I mentioned before you want to go with an 8 processor computer uh, 64 bit computer is essential it didn't used to be essential but I think it's essential why is that because Windows can run 62 can there's a 64 bit of version of Windows. What does that mean? That means Windows has the ability to see and use more than four gigs uh, that your computer has. So if, if it can use more than four gigs that means it can take advantage of more power so, so uh, of your RAM. So what is your RAM? RAM is just random access memory. People speak about it all the time. It's just something that allows you to quickly store information and quickly get it back. Uh, it, it does help your computer speed. If you only have a gig of RAM, your, your computer will have all this power, but it won't have an area to, to quickly uh, access data and remove data. So you want a sufficient amount of RAM. What is a sufficient amount of RAM? A sufficient amount of RAM is between 6 gigs if you're a normal user, and if you're a gamer, 8 gigs or more. Uh, I have 9 gigs. I've never gotten anywhere close to maxing it. Uh, the only way I can max it if I do like huge algorithm math problems. Besides that, I, I don't get anywhere near it. For gaming, gaming can, does not max my computer. I think I'd have to run Crisis with special mods on full or something. Uh, and honestly, that's more the video card than my processor. If I were to switch my video card out, that would even make it easier on my processor to go through that. Okay, so why did I say 64-bit is essential? Well, if you want to use 6 gigs of RAM, and you want Windows to be able to see those 6 gigs and to take advantage of them, then your computer needs to be 64-bit. So some people might say, oh, it's not essential, don't buy 64-bit. They might tell you not to do it. Uh, they'll say because there's very few programs that are 64-bit. That's true. But what's the one program that you use every time you turn on your computer? Windows. Uh, it might be a good idea to have that program uh, as powerful as possible. And 64-bit architecture is much more powerful and it allows you to take advantage of all that extra RAM. So if you want peak efficiency, you want a fast computer, make sure it's a 64-bit computer. If you don't know what to look for, you can ask them. Is this a 32-bit or a 64-bit? They'll tell you right away. There's only those two options. So make sure it's a 64-bit. Okay. So again, quick review. Core i7, hard drive 400 gigs or more, video card, make sure it has a GPU, about a gig of RAM there. Uh, make sure your CPU, like I said already, is 8 processors. Make sure it's a 64-bit computer. Uh, and make sure you've got enough RAM, which is 6 gigs for a normal user, 8 gigs or more if you're a gamer. Uh, the other 
things I wanted to speak about and mention here is should you get triple channel, double channel, single channel? What does channels mean? Well, your computer has slots on it. When you put RAM in, RAM can either talk with each other and work together or it can be completely on its own and lonely. So double channel is RAM that's basically in two slots but they're speaking with each other. Triple channel is in three slots but they're working together. Preferably because of the triple channel's efficiency, when you know when people work together in teams, even in the real world, they get things done better than if they, you know, there's one person doing all the work themselves. Preferably, you want triple channel. If you can't get it, I would say don't worry too much about it. If you're getting a Core i7 computer, most likely it will uh, hold triple channel RAM computers. If it's a Core i7, it's an expensive computer. It will have that triple channel in it. If it doesn't, it'll have the ability to get it inside it so you would just need to buy the triple channel RAM and switch it in don't go crazy over triple channel RAM though if, if your computer says it's double channel you're fine you don't want anything less than that though double channel minimum triple channel prefer preferable and then it's it, it, they'll say you know do you care about DDR2 DDR3 those are just different types of RAM uh, just different flavors if you want to think about it in that way so Honestly, DDR2 is just as good right now than DDR3. Uh, don't think that if they give you a DDR2, they, uh, like I said, they, they probably won't do this. There's very few companies that sell DDR2 with a new computer. But if they do, don't worry about it. Most likely, you'll get a DDR3 if you buy your new computer, and that's what you want, preferably. It's not much of a jump from DDR2, so don't, don't even worry about it. But yeah, that's your computer buying guide. Uh, this is part one. You don't have to watch part two, but if you want to go in depth, hear some of the history of, of the computer, uh, and maybe understand more of the inner workings of this, then you can watch the second part. This is Immortal Phoenix. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.